Hi, my name is Ryan Falk, and I'm one of the volunteers in the Imago Day Disability Ministry here at Cornerstone. And the reason we want to make this video today is because disability ministry cannot be just one program of the church. It has to be baked into the entire church because people with disabilities come in at every age and stage of life. And since the church isn't just a building, but a people, we all need to be involved. In the United States, about one in six people have some kind of disability. But in churches, that proportion isn't usually represented. A Clemson University study in 2018 found that there are 2.5 million Christians with disabilities in the U.S. who want to go to church, but don't. And if these 2.5 million people have parents, siblings, and spouses, that number gets much larger. And that's to say nothing of people with disabilities who aren't yet believers. So why is there this gap between people with disabilities and the church? Nobody wants to exclude people with disabilities, and yet we see that by and large, people with disabilities are underrepresented in our churches. The short answer is that the world is already filled with barriers. We don't need to do anything to put them there. What we do need to do is find those barriers and ask ourselves what we can do about them. There are a lot of misconceptions about disability. Phrases like special needs confuse the issue even further. Because the truth of the matter is that people with disabilities do not have special needs. They have the same needs as everyone else. Friendship, community, and crucially, the gospel. If we want to live out our mission as Cornerstone, to give every individual an accurate picture of God by helping those who believe become fully devoted followers of Christ, that mission has to include people with disabilities. By breaking down barriers that have kept people with disabilities out, we are fulfilling the call of Christ to go make disciples. 1 Corinthians 12 describes the church as the body of Christ and crucially demonstrates a unity in diversity and a mutual dependence. Verses 21 and 22 say, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. It's not just people with disabilities who need the church. It's the church who needs people with disabilities. When we allow barriers to persist that keep people with disabilities from the church, is it possible that we're keeping parts of our God-ordained body disconnected? There is not an us and them. There is only one church. This is about building up the body of Christ, loving those God loves, and fulfilling the Great Commission. Ephesians 4, 4-6 reminds us that there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And if God has called every person, regardless of physical or intellectual ability, into relationship with Him, shouldn't the church make the same invitation? And since the world is filled with barriers, passive acceptance isn't enough. We need to be intentional in seeking out and removing barriers that keep people from church and keep them from participating once they get here. So what can we do as a church to further this goal? Three things. First, we can listen to the experience of people with disabilities. If you or a family member have a disability and call Cornerstone home, we want to hear about barriers you might face in the church. We want to know your story. Second, we can pray that God would open our eyes to ways we can make our community a place of radical, gospel-centered inclusivity, and that God would bring people with disabilities to our church. Third, you can check out cornerstonesee.me.com disability for more information and resources.